Hey, what's going on? It's Strange and welcome to another YouTube music production video where my mission is to help you succeed in making music. And today's video is sponsored by the people at Plugin Boutique and we're going to be doing a demo of the new update to Isotopes RX-8. Now I did mention that I'll only show you guys tools that I personally will use. However, I have been using RX for a couple years now as my main editing tool since version 6. So I felt it was only natural when they approached me to do a demo for their new update. That said, Plugin Boutique did give me creative control to say what I want to say. So I will be honest with what I think about RX-8. However, honestly, there isn't much bad things to say as I use this tool all the time. Now doing these videos do help me keep doing what I do, which is to provide you free content. However, comment down below and let me know if you're cool of seeing more sponsored video content like this, as long as it fits my brand. So for those that don't know, RX-8 is an audio editing tool. And there's two main applications that I use with this tool. One is when I want to apply some mastering to a track. The other is when I want to repair audio from certain issues such as clipping or noise in the background or when I want to level out abrupt changes in volume. Comment down below and let me know what is your favorite audio editing platform. Hey remember to hit like, subscribe and share. I appreciate your help. Okay without further ado let's get right into it. All right so this is RX-8 and like any other audio editing platform you can zoom in and you can cut and paste snippets of audio and whenever I need to make little cuts I do use RX-8. And over on the right here are all the tools within RX-8 and there are the repairing tools. So if you expand on this, you can find declip, declick, which I use often. D-reverb is a nice tool to remove reverb from like a vocal sample or whatnot. Declipping I find very useful when you have a piece of audio that's clipping. This is actually a game changer. So I use this quite often. And then there's the more neat, newer functions such as the music rebalance, spectral recovery, and we're gonna get into those later on. The wow and flutter is also a really cool effect when you have those tape recordings where you have fluttering in the pitches, so this can resolve it. And then you have the utility functions, which is your EQs, your fades, your gain and levelers and whatnot. So as you can see, it has an assortment of tools and pretty much everything you need to edit and repair audio. Now, one of the main features of RX is its spectral view. So notice on the bottom left here, we have the slider here. If you slide this slowly, it'll eventually show this spectral view of your waveform. And essentially what this is, is it's a map of the information or the intensity of information within a frequency range. So let me play this waveform for you, which is an old NASA recording. Roger. And we're getting a picture on the TV. So notice that bleeping over the vocal. So if we slide over into the spectral view, you can then notice where in the frequency range that bleep is playing. So you see this little line here. So that's the bleep. Roger. So what we can do is we can use the selection tool and we can highlight that section. Now I'm gonna highlight just above here because there's some information here that belongs to the bleep. Now you can hold shift and then select to make multiple selections. And then we have this tool called spectral repair. And what this does is that it kind of scrubs this information out and fills it out with information around it to kind of disguise the sound. So if you hit render. Roger. Roger. So essentially that bleep has been removed just like that. So this is a really impressive and powerful tool with RX-8. All right, another great application with RX-8 is when you have a low quality sample where you're missing a lot of those high frequencies. And this is especially when I'm sampling from old YouTube videos and I do this often, and you're missing all that high-end information. So here's the sample. Is it night already? 9.30. And notice how all that high end is missing. So what you can do is you can pull up spectral recovery 
and you click on learn and what it does is it scans this audio and tries to fill in the missing information. So this line on the graph here represents the current available information in our audio. Now when we click render, Notice how this line now is filled out and get more information on these higher frequencies. So this was before. Is it night already? It's 9.30. And this is after. Is it night already? It's 9.30. So notice how it sounds a little more clear with those high frequencies. All right, another feature that I found handy is the music rebalance function. And I find this useful when, for example, you have a song where you've lost the project file and all you have is one kind of rough mix. And you may need to adjust the elements of the mix. For example, the bass and maybe the drums may be too loud. And however, you're stuck with this flat audio and you may have no other way to adjust the mix. And in a normal situation without RX, you'd be stuck with this file and you wouldn't have a way to rebalance the mix of the bass and drums. However, with the music rebalance tool, it has an algorithm which is able to detect the vocal, bass, percussion, and other parts of the track. And using this, you can then adjust the balance, for example, of the bass and bring those down. So this was before. And this is after where I rebalance the mix of the drums and bass. So very powerful feature if you need to rebalance a mix and you don't have the project anymore. This is a great way to resolve that issue. All right, another cool application with the music balance function is you can use it to separate or isolate certain stems. For example, you may want to extract a vocal from a track, so you can use the acapella for a remix. So here's a track here with my friend Anastasia. So we can pull up the music rebalance tool. For one, you can t extract the vocal by hitting the solo section. So you get only the vocal. Now this tool does take a lot of CPU, so it has to process it in chunks. Now just note that it's using an algorithm to try to isolate the vocal. So it's never completely perfect. You might get some artifacts. For example, you still might get some bits and pieces of the drums coming through, but that's all part of the algorithm. I'd say it's impossible to get it perfect. Maybe in the future, we might come up with more AI technologies where it could recreate the vocal from your vocal profile. But for now, this is the best we have. And I say it's pretty darn good. Now, aside from isolating the vocal, you may want to split it into its stems. And this is particularly useful for mixes where you have a very distinct vocal, bass, and drums and other instruments such as a band playing. So what you can do is you can hit the separate button and they'll split it into its four different stems, the vocal, bass, percussion, and the other. All right, in full honesty, that did take almost five minutes to extract the stems from a 30 second clip. I wonder what's happening in the back. Maybe there's some really intensive algorithms happening, but I guess if you really need to extract all your stems for a track, perhaps hit the process button and then go for a walk or grab a coffee and you come back and you'll have your stems. So here's the vocal stem. Every ounce of energy experience. Here's the drum stem. Here's the bass stem. And here are the, the all the other instruments. So I think what you'll get was is all the ambiance in between the other stems. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but especially for vocals, you can disguise the artifacts with your beats and instruments. So it's definitely usable if you really need acapella from a track. 
All right, here's another useful tool which has been around since the early versions of Rx and DClick. So sometimes I might get some stems from collaborators and the base stem may have some clicks like this one here. And this often happens on sub bass when it changes notes, you get that clicking. So we apply the DClick function now you'll still get some of the attacks of the bass, but that's just part of the attack. But notice the clicking is gone. Now if you increase the click widening, so that will remove more of it. So very useful tool. All right, and back to our NASA sample. Roger. Notice how there's a bunch of noise in this recording. Now you can take a sample of this noise and then apply the spectral denoise. You can then click learn and it'll scan the spectral profile of the noise. And then you can apply this filter to the entire sample to remove the noise. Roger. So notice now the noise is completely removed. Roger. So declipping is another useful tool. And sometimes you might have a stem where certain sounds are distorting. Sometimes this happen with bass when the bass is a bit too high and it's clipping. So we have this clipping sample of a bass with some other sounds in the mix. So notice the popping in the sample. So that's caused by the clipping of the bass. So simply we can apply the D-clip plugin. So what we had to do is set the threshold and you can see how low we need to set it by the line here. We just need to set the line just a bit before the peaks of the sample and then render it. And notice how the clipping has been removed. Going back 10 years ago, this would have been like magic and would have solved a lot of issues. So awesome function. All right, so the wow and flutter function is cool, especially for old tape and vinyl recordings where you have these fluctuations in pitch. So notice how it sounds like an old tape recorder or even like a broken piano. So we can apply this wow and flutter effect and then it virtually removes all that fluttering. Now you still hear that slower fluctuation. That's because we're using the medium speed of the fluctuation removal. So if we apply the wow mode with a more slower wow rate, it's a very powerful function. So there's the D reverb effect. And this is useful when you have samples that have reverb on it and you want to isolate and remove that reverb. Ra, ta, ta, ta. So using the D reverb plugin, now you can select the EQ profile in terms of what you want to remove using these sliders. So for example, if your reverb had more low mids, then you want to increase the low mid slider as well. If you want to remove those high mids, then you'll have to increase the high mids. And then you have the intensity of the reduction and the tail length of your reverb. So I'm gonna max the reverb length out because it is a pretty long reverb. And then the enhanced dry signal just aims to make the end product sound a bit better. Okay, so here it is. Ra, ta, ta, ta. So it's pretty much removed that reverb signal and we have the dry signal. Ra, ta, ta, ta. You may still get remnants of the reverb remaining. Again, this is an algorithm, so it does the best it can. If you really need to, you can truncate the sections. Since it's pretty dry now, it'd be fine if you were to isolate certain sections and just mute out the tail. Ra, ta, ta, ta. So those are my favorite features in RX-8. And as you can see, it's a powerful, audio editing platform. And I use this tool pretty much every day, whether I'm doing simple tasks such as editing and chopping up audio, or when I need to do more intensive tasks such as resolving noise issues with my audio. So I hope you guys found this informative. I hope you guys found it helpful. And if you like what you've seen in RX-8, it is available for a free trial. And I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching.
keep practicing. I'll see you at the next video.